Welcome to Civic Voters Education 2023 on Trust TV. I am Ne Opia Clark. Welcome to the programme. Now, in every election, participation of the citizens is very important. There is the need, therefore, to carry all cadre of society along in the electoral process. Voter and civic education are, of course, very necessary to ensure that all constituents, men and women alike, understand their rights, their political system, and the contest that they're being asked to decide on, as well as how and where to vote. In this episode of Civic Voters Education 2023, we will be looking at the use of the bimodal voter accreditation system, otherwise known as BIVAS, in this election. This programme is facilitated by the Institute for Media and Society, as well as funded by the European Union. Please note that the content of this broadcast does not reflect the views of the Institute for Media and Society, nor that of the European Union. Now to begin the programme, let's take a look at some news highlights ahead of the 2023 general election. The Independent National Electoral Commission has said that university lecturers that will be deployed for this year's general elections as ad hoc collation and returning officers must swear to an oath of neutrality. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said this in Abuja during a meeting with Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Federal Universities at the National Universities Commission. According to him, the oath of neutrality is for all election staff in line with Section 26 of the Electoral Act 2022. Yakubu said that the Commission will not deploy any university teacher with obvious political leaning for the elections. Ahead of the February 25 and March 11 general elections, the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, Yaga Africa, has charged the Independent National Electoral Commission to make public and address the challenges identified during the testing of the bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS. The executive director of Yaga Africa, Samson Nitoru, made the call during the presentation of its findings on the mock accreditation exercise recently conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Samson, who said most of the devices were activated and configured in line with the guidelines, added that some devices failed during activation and configuration due to hardware failures. He said INEC investigating cases where Beavers failed to authenticate the biometrics of voters despite having the names on the register will inspire public confidence in the Beavers and IREV. The need for the Nigerian media to be more deliberate and intentional in amplifying the voices of women and ensuring inclusivity for people with disability in the political and electoral space has been re-emphasized. The Executive Director, Institute for Media and Society, Dr. Akin Akimbulu, gave the charge at a two-day workshop themed sharing on good practices and trends on inclusive coverage of the electoral process for media practitioners held in Abuja. He said the workshop was aimed at re-energizing the media to give quality attention to inclusive participation in the 2023 electoral process. One of the facilitators at the workshop and the lecturer Department of Mass Communication, University of Lagos, Professor Abigail Ogwezi Indisika, harped on the need for broadcast journalists to deepen professionalism in the coverage of women, youth and PWDs. The Albino Foundation has appealed to security agencies to help persons with albinism and other persons with disabilities to enjoy their voting priority rights during the forthcoming general elections. Albino Foundation's Chief Executive Officer Jake Epele made the plea at the Inter-Security Agency's training on disability inclusive election security held in Abuja. Epele also urged security personnel to ensure that PWDs were adequately protected to exercise their franchise during the polls as provided for in the 2022 Electoral Act. Time now for us to hear what Nigerians think about the use of the bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS.
Uh, I got a text this morning asking me to come for my Viva and so I came. And it was seamless. There was no stress. I was expecting to see a crowd and expecting to waste a lot of time, but it wasn't, it wasn't that way. It was straight to the point. I found my name and then I tried dumping the picture and that was it. To witness um, the mock accreditation and so far so good from the Beavers machine, right, from the accreditation process, which is about three, right, the first one is the thumbprint, the second is the facial, and the third is about the six last numbers at the VIN. So it works very well. And another thing that I see that I'm so happy about is that the Beavers is not connected to any sort of network. What the Beavers works with are the number of registered voters that has been implanted into the Beavers machine. So there will be no issue of bad network or no issue of you know network failure. So so I have seen about five people get, get gotten accredited in less than about two minutes. No, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting time up to one minute. I have done successfully. All your uh, information were shown immediately. I've been, I've been sure and it's a smart team which is successful. So for showing that, so I'm successful, I'm, I'm okay for that. Maybe it can be done everywhere like that. You don't have any other problem with this election. We all enjoyed the situation. They brought the beefers, they tested the footers cards, they brought as many as possible members so that have their footers card that maintaining the unit here so to test them and it was done successfully so all i was not part of the person that they tested but i witnessed everything i was here to know uh, the process is doing well because when i come i give them my card they, they told me to use my fingerprint in order to authenticate me and then when i use the fingerprint and then every, everything about me is come out and it, yes it's me and they ask me, and then when they ask me, and then they still write it on it, then it's me on the voter's card. All this is just take just two minutes done with everything. And the entire process goes successfully. We were here before eight, and we met all the INEX staffs, things are ready. Then I was accredited through one form, and, and my voter's card goes right. Well, there you have it. Nigerians speaking their mind. Now, in this segment of the program, we also spoke with the ICT team on the use of the BIVAS. Let's take a look. Well, the BIVAS is the bimodal <coughs> um, voter accreditation system. Um, this is what it looks like, in case people that don't know what it looks like. It is um, designed to read um, to read the permanent voters card during the election. So when you come and vote, um, we use the paper to do accreditation for you so that you can now proceed to voting um, in the election. So um, a lot of people said, I had, uh, we claim that the beavers is a, is a game changer. Mm. What it does is to eradicate malpractices, you know, election, electoral malpractices in, during the election, um, where there's people don't, you know, it's not a case where people, will, multiple voting will take place. Uh, the beaver is supposed to eliminate that and just give, um, to be one man, one vote. As long as you have a permanent voter's card that, that is being designed and manufactured by INEC. <laughs> you cannot come with a fake card to try to beat the beaver. So it is a game changer in the elections. Um, you have a voter who, you know, who proceeds for voting and then they will, they, will, they will look at the card, their permanent voter's card. And in there, they will look at the register to make sure you're in the register. And then you place the card on the Beaver's machine to authenticate the person, to make sure like that the person that's coming to vote is the right person. And apart from that, you use your, they can either use your facial or your, 
your uh, thumbprint, your finger um, print to authenticate you to ensure that you are the person that's saying that you're voting. So there are three ways now. No, either or. Either, either you use the card. No, the card is to ensure that you have a permanent voter's card. Without a permanent voter's card, you can vote. But when you bring your card, it shows that INEC has given you a permanent voter's card. So that means that you're on the register. They also cross check you in the register to make sure you're on the register. But the authentication can either be your fingerprint or your facial recognition, either or. Whichever comes first. Well, now that we have done a lot of changes and you know done a lot of updates to the beavers, um, to the design beaver the systems and all that, it shouldn't take that long. It should be within, um, I would say, between a minute or two. When you put your finger on, it, it pulls it out right away, or your facial. So it should be between a minute or two. To, to uh, you know, do authentication. Yeah, like I said, we have a system whereby before the beavers goes out, you know, when it gets to the LG, a local government area, and it gets to the ward, it is charged overnight. We always keep charging it before you take it out. It's, it will be fully charged before you take it out to the field. So, and besides, we have backup batteries if in case anything happens. Um, we have some backup power banks that we use. But the, 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 it should be able to last eight hours. You know, fully charged, it should last eight hours. So, I'm pretty sure that by the time the election is always over at the time. Now, what we're trying to do is, um, um, we do it, we did some form of um, I would say segregation of the PUs in that a large PU when it, when it's over um, I think it's a thousand maybe it's over a um, thousand seven hundred or it's over seven hundred and fifty if the the PU is over seven hundred and fifty there's a way we we divide that between um, beavers. So that means that one beavers might carry 750 people and then the other starting again from 751 is going to be carried by another beavers. Um, so we split the register among those beavers to, to ensure that you know we don't have a long line. I mean, it is more advanced. The beavers is definitely more advanced. Um, because um, in the previous one, you can only do fingerprint, it doesn't capture your facial recognition. But now, the beavers allow you to be able to do both facial as well as the fingerprint. And the beavers is also used for other, uh, other functions of the election, like snapping the register and sending it um, to the cloud. So, it does a lot more function, there's more functionalities in the beavers than the previous equipment that we used for election. And it's more accurate. So now we, we know definitely that we can capture more people. Because now if you're, for, for, for whatever reason, um, we can't capture your fingerprint, we can always capture your facial. So definitely either one of them is, will work. Yeah, um, after the, um, the old accreditation and the voting, you can use the beavers to also capture the results and send it. First of all, you can use the papers to uh, upload the results to the cloud. Also, you can scan the result sheets and also upload to a different platform that is needed. Um, one of the processes that we have. So this um, data part is that some of the functions for transfer of papers that is separates from other. Uh, devices that we use, and also the device, uh, the device can be used where there's no, um, uh, what would I say, data connection. You can use it offline, and then when you do finish up with your accreditation and everything is done, you just move it to uh, a place. You can move it to anywhere where you can get 
um, a Wi-Fi connection and it will automatically send the results up. So it can be used online and offline, which is, which is very good. <laughs> well, um, first of all, the first thing that gets sent is the accreditation data. The accreditation data, no one, I mean, as long as once you finish doing accreditation and it's all done, you just say sent and that gets sent to you. And then the EC8A that is being done at the polling unit, you scan the beaver, you can scan the result with the, with the beaver and sent so that it looks like it's authentic. People have signed it and everything, it goes to the cloud too. And then there, you know, it, 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 there's a different process in which um, when you take the results to um, the coalition center, um, they can look at the result and then look at what's in the cloud and make sure it's right before it's passed for publishing. So yes, it can be done in several ways, but those are the those are the ways we use we do it so that it doesn't look like it's it's been um, the results have been changed or whatever because of the snap that you take. It's authentic result that is being done that is sent. Well, when you, what it does is that you can only, only people that do accreditation are allowed to vote. So if the, for me, it shows that if the, um, if you have, like for instance, you have 500 people in a polling unit and only 300 people came to vote. But you understand that those children people must do, they must pass through the beaver for accreditation. So you can only only the people that are, that does accreditation should vote. So if you don't, if you if you are not accredited, you cannot vote. So I don't see how um, that should eliminate overvoting, because overvoting means that some people that came there without the use of the beavers are voting. So why by when you check the result of the beavers and the result of people that voted, there is a, um, some uh, anomalies on the on the on the on the results. So when you check that out, you should know exactly that. Oh, if the beaver says 300 people came, and now you have 500 people voting, then there's something wrong. That means that there are, there are about 200 people that didn't pass through the beavers to vote. Which definitely is an overvote and should be cancelled. I don't know how that's going to be useful because you have to come with your PVC to come and vote. And that's the reason why when you put your PVC on the beaver, it should show your face. It should show when they bring up your data, it should show your face. And the um, APO or PO that is that is um, there to ensure that the right things are done, we we'll definitely look at you and say, if you bring somebody else's card, number one, it's going to be very hard for you to authenticate the person because the fingerprints are going to be different. So there's really no way you can pass that stage where you can take somebody else. Your facial will be different as well as the fingerprint will be different. So there's no way you can get accreditation done. Well, for when the results, um, when we send the result to the cloud, right, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be um, it's going to be published right away. There's a mechanism that we go through. Uh, I mean, I don't want to expose <laughs> all our, um, what would I say, security systems, but it is being verified and you know authenticated to make sure that um, this, the result that comes is the right result. And um, if there's any deep scoot in the result, it is resolved before it is made published. You don't want to publish a result if it's not authenticated. If it's not, if you're not sure of the result that is being. What if they made a mistake? Maybe, maybe when, when they were doing, um, maybe the way they were adding it up, and maybe the coalitions that made a mistake. Somebody has to verify that. What if the coalition is being? Colluded with some 
how some party agents and they decide to change the numbers. So you have to have, it's like, you know, you have somebody watching somebody to ensure that whatever we put out there is the authentic result. So before you publish, somebody has to go and take a look at it to ensure that it is the right result that we are publishing. You are going to be seeing it from Facebook. You are going to see the result being published. As soon as it leaves, the polling unit is sent. You know, when it's sent to the cloud and we they cross-check it to make sure it's the right result is authenticated, then they do publishing. Because when they publish, it's hard to take it back, but they've seen it and you can. So you have to be sure what you're publishing. You know, and as well as um, the process goes faster. And there you have it. We've come to the end of the program. Thank you for being a part of this episode. And please remember that for an election to be successful and democratic, voters must understand their rights and responsibilities. They must also be sufficiently knowledgeable and well-informed in order to cast the ballot that will be deemed legally valid. This program is facilitated by the Institute for Media and Society and funded by the European Union. Please note that the content of this broadcast does not reflect the views of the Institute for Media and Society, nor that of the European Union. Until next time, I am Ney Opia-Clark.